Are there any dangers, potential dangers with hormone replacement? What are some of the, the side effects or downsides yeah. of that? I think with hormone replacement and women, it became clear in 2002, uh, th there were lots of changes due to the, uh, the World Health Initiative big study that was stopped mm -hmm. and, and what had commonly been accepted as safe and good proved not to be so much. I would say, and it's not just that form of hormone replacement, but that any hormone replacement, any hormones being added have to really be thought out and, and individualized. Um, each person is different. Someone's breast cancer risk has to come into the equation. Mm -hmm. What we know about hormones and their ability to convert and do various things. There are certain people, I would say, you know, no, they, d they wouldn't be good candidates for this type of hormone because we don't want to even entertain the risk in mm -hmm. the body, whereas other people don't have those same factors. Now, how much risk is there with a natural hormone versus synthetic? Um, my work has always been in physiologic dosing, and what that means is that we, we only give as much as the body could make. Okay. That's quite a bit different than another practitioner you might be talking to that does pharmacologic dosing, which is a dosing that makes people feel better but exceeds what the body ever would have made. Mm -hmm. And th that's where my own kind of philosophy and training comes in to say, we've exceeded what we know the body is prepared to uh, detoxify well. Mm -hmm. And we, we increase risk by doing those doses, even if we're talking about the same bioidentical hormone. And so that's one area that I don't think is talked about very much. You'll hear of somebody being natural, doing natural mm -hmm. hormones, it matters philosophically and literally what dosing paradigms you're using. Mm -hmm. And so again, I, I stay within, you know, if a man can only make so much testosterone, we're not going to double or triple that just because it feels good for a brief period. Mm -hmm. It causes problems later too. But some of that is happening and that would be my greatest concern with some of the hormone work being done. Natural is better obviously than a synthetic molecule because mm -hmm. the body knows how to break it down. And so that's why we like the bioidentical. Mm -hmm. It's still made in a laboratory. It's still a prescription type right. uh, hormone, but the, it, it doesn't have the same byproducts that can't be metabolized, because mm -hmm. those are usually the ones that cause the problems. And when you talk about dosing, how do you, how do you know if someone comes in in, in their 40s or 50s, what their levels were? 30 years ago, what their optimal levels were, and how do you know what level to shoot for? Yeah, and that's a great question. What we know is a general understanding of what the body's producing during these various decades mm -hmm. of life. So that's well established for us. And then we use laboratory to look at where they are compared to that. And an example is I'm not going to try have my menopausal women look like 16 or 18 year old women hormonally. I'm going mm -hmm. to try to do the minimal amount of hormone that makes them feel really vital and robust um, without exceeding a physiologic dosing. And yet we're not trying to, to, uh, to exceed what would be expected, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So testing helps me and then we have ranges, they have ranges established for us as to what's expected, what's optimal.